Good evening, friends. My name is Pastor Myron. I'd like to welcome you to the Saturday night service of Grace Wesley in Fort Lauderdale, where we're a welcoming community of believers sharing Christ's love, grace, and redemption with all. Tonight, I'd just like to welcome you. Uh, uh, we're going to have a special service tonight. We have a guest preacher, and we have uh, a special uh, group of mus- musicians that are going to play for us tonight. Freddie has brought along a group of teenagers that he's been mentoring for some time. They're all hiding right now. But <laughs> He, he's brought them along. He's been mentoring uh, these kids to, as they play music and they're learning to do something constructive uh, uh, and be doing things in a church setting. And all of us would agree that's good, wholesome stuff for kids to be doing these days. And so this, these kids came out and played for us on the Family Fun Day, and we enjoyed that out there. And so they've come back tonight to play for us here, and uh, we're just going to see what it's like for us to have a band in here playing for us as we sing praise and worship. So uh, all in all, it's going to be a a special night. Uh, There are some announcements in your bulletin. Uh, As always, we have our regular Monday night men's group, and now we have the Monday night ladies study going on at the same time. The men are in the conference room. The ladies are in here. Tuesday night, we have our pastor's Bible study down the sanctuary. And then uh, this Thursday night, we will have the second of the month uh, Wesley study. So the Thursday night, we'll have a Wesley study down in the conference room as well. If there's other announcements in the bulletin. I invite you to read those. Best times during the sermon. And uh, uh, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to come to your house to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the the kids that have come to be with us. And we thank you uh, for our guests being here. And we thank you for the visitors, those who have come to check us out. And Lord, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to be in us and among us, to enliven our hearts and our minds to the messages you have for us as we hear your word read and proclaimed. And Lord, as uh, the band leads us in song, we ask that you hear our hearts as we sing praises to you. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you will stand as you are able and join us, though we say our beliefs as found in the historic Apostles' Creed, the words will be on the screen and they're in your bulletin. Let us state our beliefs. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I thank God for getting me here safely. I was on a real tight sort of time situation coming on I-95. I thought I wasn't going to make it, but uh, thank God he allowed me to come here safely. I'm bringing you the reading, the first reading for the day, and it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 through 20. In the book of Deuteronomy, we have Moses' farewell address to the people of Israel, knowing they would be soon entering Canaan without him. Moses was responsible for reminding them of the binding agreement or covenant that their parents had made with the Lord at Mount Sinai. A great many of those who heard Moses' speech had not been born when the original covenant was made. Now, young adults, they need to know what was expected of them when they entered the promised land. Deuteronomy is the summary of godly heritage, a record of God's faithfulness during more than 40 difficult years. It is the final pronouncement of a great leader. And now the reading. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. 
For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in the obedience to him, and to keep his commandments, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, then you will increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your hearts turn away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here ends the reading of the word of God for the people of God. It's so good to be here tonight. How's everybody feel? Well, we brought a, a, a whole band tonight. We brought a whole band. I'm, I'm really, and I'm very thankful to Pastor. I'm very thankful to Fred and, and this opportunity to, they, they were at the park with us when we celebrated there at the, that, the event we had at the park, which was, which was great. And, and Pastor and Fred asked us, uh, you know, if they could come back and, and uh, uh, they were, 100% excited, you know, they, they just love the opportunity to to sing and to worship and uh, Just so you get to know them really quickly uh, on the vocals. It's Catherine and Adriana Adriana on the vocals on the keys We have uh, George on keys on saxophone. We have Xavier on, on Keys in the back. We have Alessandro on drums. We have Alan and on bass we have Lewis All right, so these are This is the band uh, and, I'm, uh, and when we were rehearsing uh, for tonight, I, I, I was looking at this band, and I was, I was watching them play and, uh, for Jesus and, and doing these songs, and I was like, man, this is what we need in the world. We need more of this in the world. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the Grammys, but the display of satanic uh, ritual by different artists and uh, Jay-Z, Sam Smith, where they're just destroying destroying Jesus and lifting up Satan. So we need young people to raise up and lift the name of Jesus more than anything. Yeah, we have to do that more than ever. So this, this blesses my heart to see, to even be a part of that. Pastor Fred, thank you so much for this opportunity and for being able to worship. So we're gonna worship together. So let's all stand. And I'm gonna let them do the first song alone. These guys are rock and rollers. It, 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 it's gonna be good though. We keep, we're gonna keep it at a low volume, don't worry. <laughs> I told him to calm down. I told him to no. uh, But this first song is called Freedom and the freedom to worship and express ourselves. So, guys, it's all you. Oh, God bless. Amen. into the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Bring all of your burdens, 
bring all of your scars Come back to communion Come back to the star Run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name, lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Second reading comes to you to ceiling from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 9. In our passage today, the Apostle Paul writes to Corinthians church about their spiritual maturity. He says to them and to us that in order to grow spiritually, we must grow in a new direction. It may be new because it is a change from the direction we have been going. Or if we have been following God closely, it is new in the sense that it belongs to the new life that is Jesus Christ, which is different from where our sins and the world leads us. Going in this new direction means two things. Negatively, we must depart from sin. Positively, we must focus on God. Here is now the reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. Mere infants in Christ, I give you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. From, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Apollos, 
Are you not mere human beings? What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you can come to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered, but God has been made it, God has made it to grow. So neither one who plants nor one who waters is anything, but only God. Who makes things grow, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. Here ends the second reading for the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's all stand. Let's sing this beautiful song, Goodness of God. Let's sing about his goodness. Let's go, guys. I love you, Lord. Yeah. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing all my life. Oh, yeah. Of the goodness of God. Love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no one. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life, let's raise our voice. Let's sing it. Say. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. With every breath that I am made. I will sing. Let's sing that chorus again. All my life, say, all my life you have been faithful. We believe it. We believe it. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Then we say this part. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I believe it. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, let's see it. Come on. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. We believe it. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. All my life we say, and all my. And all my life you have been faithful 
Say this with our hearts. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will see the goodness of God. I will see. I will see of the goodness of God. Round of applause for His goodness. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the ways in which you care for us and provide for us and take care of us. Lord, we're so grateful that at every turn, there you are. You're there when we don't need material things. You're there when we need love, we need comfort, and we need peace. May we always cling to you for those things too. Lord, at this time we offer back a small part of what you first gave us. Lord, I ask that you bless these gifts and bless the givers. Send your spirit to guide their use. And may the meditations of all of our hearts, wherever we are, and the meditations of our mouths be worthy to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If, you are, if you will, join us as we sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. church. So wonderful to be back. Especially when you come from Minnesota <laughs> and you see the weather outside, you don't want to go back. But I have family waiting for me and I'm literally anxious to go back and be with them. Uh, you probably know me already or just heard from me. Um, about me. My name is Franklin Rodriguez. I was here uh, last year exploring the church, meeting you all. It was a, an amazing experience. Um, before I enter into the message, I want to introduce my family. I think it will be a picture up there. No? Okay. Well, if you come after the sermon, I can show the picture to you. How's that sound? Um, my wife, Noel, she sent love. My son, Lucas, who is about to turn five, sent his love his way. <laughs> um, and we are just happy uh, for the opportunity. I want to uh, thank Pastor Myron, Fred, the leadership team, uh, for hosting me this weekend, for all the wonderful things you have been, that you have provided for me. God is doing something great in this church, and you are part of it. Amen? Amen. Um, so, yeah, you're hearing right. You're hearing an accent, okay? It sounds like it, but it's not. I'm from Cuba. And in Cuba, they don't teach you the right language. <laughs> Not if you want to come to the U.S. and preach. They teach you Spanish. Spanish is the language that we will speak in heaven, but in earth, on earth, we will speak English. <laughs> Woo! So today, I wake up early in the morning and I went to the beach. I won't be able to tell you which one. I don't know the names, but it was a beautiful one. And I was sitting there, reading my notes, uh, meditating on God, praying, 
kind of like having that time alone with Jesus, which is kind of hard when you have a five-year-old running around all the time. And I was enjoying my time, and suddenly this guy came along and sat right beside me and asked me, can I see it? Well, you're already, you're here already, that's fine. We are good. Um, and he said, well, the reason I'm asking is because I'm gonna get a smoke. And I say, all right, um, I was about to leave anyway, <laughs> because I really hate when people smoke around. Uh, but uh, I feel the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, you don't get to leave, you get to talk to him. <laughs> and say, wow, okay. Started sharing Jesus with Brian, that's his name. The first thing he said was, I was a Christian back in the day. He is about 58 years old. And he said to me, I was on fire for God, was preaching everywhere, but life got in the way and I separated myself from church, had all this struggle going on. And I haven't been in church for many, many years. Right there I felt the Holy Ghost as I feel it right now. And I say to him, well, the reason you're sitting right next to me, well, I'm preparing a message for tonight is because the Holy Spirit brought you here so you can hear the message of salvation and that Jesus is no matter you, he's actually waiting for you to come back. Almost until I ask him if I can pray and he say yes. Please pray for me. I just lost my job two weeks ago. My family is going uh, downturn, down way. Just please pray for me. I pray for him right there in the beach. He was all on fire. Um, and I invite him to church. So you might, you might hear from him. Um, my topic to, to, to this evening is anointed for it. And I want to talk to you about the presence of Jesus in our daily life and how we can not only have a relationship with Jesus, but we can actually get to share him with other people. See, in 2012, I have the opportunity to come to the U.S. Didn't speak any English back then. Uh, so for me, it was a totally new experience. And in 2021, I received my American citizenship. You know, you get to go in this process of naturalization, right? That's how they call it. And when you have the test and you pass the test, they call you to the stage and say, congratulations, you are now an American citizen. And you are, whoo hoo <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But you will understand that that naturalization doesn't happen in that moment. It happened in your life when you either go to a new contest or a new culture or you meet new people, you're starting eating new food, something that is no, something that you are not used to it, right? And you have to become naturalized in that environment if you want to survive. And you start feeling and experience an, an internal uh, transformation. Isn't that right? Well, naturalization is, is a real thing. Even God took that route. Even God become a man, a human being. Have you ever asked yourself why God become a man? Wasn't there some other way to show his love for humanity, for the world? A less expensive way? a less humiliating way. Of course, you know that God has been revealed himself through many, 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 many things. 
creations. Creation is one of those things. You see a creation and you can see the love of God for the thing that he has made. Amen? We can actually hear from the prophets, either from the Old Testament or the New Testament, and you, we can see the revelation of God, his word, the Bible. And all of these things are revelations of God himself, but in Jesus, in Jesus, we have God made flesh. So the full manifestation of God's love is in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hallelujah. There is no higher standard, there's no higher revelation than Jesus himself. Amen. Amen. Now, Luke chapter 3, which is the chapter before our reading, and I'm going to get to the reading, and I'm going to be short, don't worry. In, in, in Luke chapter 3, we can see God's affirmation of Jesus' sonship. Uh, you can remember, you, you remember after Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form as a dove. And, and, and they heard the voice of God saying, this is my son. This is my only son, my beloved son. In you, say God to Jesus, I am well pleased. See, Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God. He is the revelation of God. Now, Dr. Luke happened to be a physician. He's also writing the book, uh, uh, writing the, the account. He is no part of the 12 disciples. But he has spent most of his time talking about who Jesus is. You can read it uh, from the beginning to the end. He's concerned that people understand who is Jesus. And he presents Jesus in different ways. He presents Jesus as a divine man. He called it the son of man. He presents Jesus as a savior, the Lord, the servant. But he also presents Jesus as the incarnate God, God in the flesh. Amen? God in the flesh. Let's go to the, our reading tonight. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 21 says this. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were, fi were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. See, when we read verse 16 to 17, we can see Luke portraying a beautiful image of something uh, related to Jesus' hometown. Je uh, Luke is, is, is talking about Jesus' hometown, which was Nazareth. And up to this point in Jesus' ministry, at least from Jesus, uh, for Luke account, uh, there haven't been any miracles yet. But Luke highlight that Jesus was annoyed to do the work. He was ready to do it. But he spent almost 30 years in Nazareth. And you may wonder, what, what, he was, what, what, what was Jesus doing all that time in Nazareth? Now, coming, to, coming back home wasn't rare. 
is like me coming to Miami. Every time I say in Minnesota that I'm from Cuba, people think that I'm from Hialeah. <laughs> I don't know why. There might be some connections there. I have to explain, no, I'm from the island. I'm from Cuba, from the country. But Jesus was well known there for being the, the son of Joseph, the carpenter. And there's a few things that Luke highlight that I want to share with you. First thing, Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Here is where he's going to school. He's going to school. He's uh, making friends, uh, co-workers, family members. See, Jesus has a personal community where he belongs to. Even before he shared that he was the son of God, the Bible doesn't say it before this time, this moment, but he was there. He was living. He was doing what he was supposed to do. He's also attending the synagogue. He was participating in the religious worship or service that they had. And this is kind of like a public level of Jesus, even though that level would increase. In his, in his ministry, but before that, he was public because, because people knew him, right? And he also announced his ministry in Nazareth. Now, can you imagine with me for a second how was Jesus before this announcement? You can probably imagine Jesus in his early years most likely going to school, playing around, going house to house, working with his dad, stepfather. <laughs> uh, and people relating to him. Now, all this time, the Lord of the universe in a small town. Why? Why? That's my question, why? There's, there probably were many other ways that God can reveal himself, but he chose to move into the neighborhood. He chose to have a seat code, a ma ma mailbox. He chose to be one of us and to share with us all our sufferings, our pains, our questions, our confusions, our struggles. Jesus became a man. The word became a flesh. John 1 14 says this, and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father only son, full of grace and truth. Or as uh, Stanley Jones will describe it, and he says, this is the great divider between Christianity and all other religions. Because all other religions teach that the word become the word, become a philosophy, a moralism, a system, a technique, but for all time and for all people everywhere, the word become flesh. The idea become fact. Hallelujah. And now we can relate to that Jesus. And now we can speak to that Jesus. Because he knows us. He understands us. Hallelujah. He knows our pain and our struggles. It would be ideal if the church understand that the work of incarnation was, was not only, only for Jesus, but it, it is also for the church to become familiar, to become naturalized with our own contest, meaning our family, our neighbors, people around us. They need to know God. I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't know exactly, but I can guess. Pastor, you don't know how hard it is to speak with my neighbor. Father, I don't even know him. He's too loud. 
<laughs> he might be Cuban. <laughs> I can stand that guy. You have different values, you see. He believes in something else. I know culture is different everywhere. And people are different everywhere. But the way God has intended is for us to be placed in a place <laughs> that we can be fruitful, that we can share his love with others. You are not there by a mistake. God has anointed you to fulfill his mission. I say he has anointed you. Because when we, when we are, we were, were saved, when you were saved, the Holy Spirit descended upon you. And you're now filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're now filled with the presence of Jesus. And he's asking you to do the same. Go and make disciples. Go and share the light. Go and be my witness. So they can know they can be redeemed. Now when the time came, he stood up to read. I love it. I love the, how Luke is making that pause. And then, and then he say, he stood up to read. Now was the time. This is Luke saying, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where he was reading. You see, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. That's how the service was conducted back then. The preacher or the prayer person stood up to read. And somebody from the congregation, the officials more likely, will stand the scroll. And Jesus found the place where he was reading. And now this is a combination from Isaiah, Isaiah 58 and Isaiah 61. So Luke is doing this intentionally. Luke is, is combining these two verses. So he can speak to his contest. See? Luke is doing something really smart here. He is combining two verses so he can speak to the people in the audience. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That's the first thing Jesus read. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed, anointed me. See, the Methodist movement began with a man called John Wesley. I know you know that. How many Methodists are here? Woo! When he said, the wall is my perish. You don't want me to preach here? That's fine. The war is my parish. I'll preach down there, the beach. <laughs> and he was filled with the Holy Ghost and started preaching and preaching and preaching. And people began to recognize Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's the Methodist movement that we have now. I don't know if you are aware that in Asbury, Theological seminary, there is an outpouring of the Holy Ghost for a week. For a week, they cannot stop praying, they cannot stop worshiping. This is what, the, what God can do through us. And this is what God wants to do here, I believe. And he says, the Holy Spirit is upon me. The Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of sight of, to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim, to proclaim, to proclaim, to proclaim this message. The message of salvation, the message of the kingdom. Now, as a, as a church planted, I recognize that without the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm nothing. I cannot do anything without the Holy Ghost being active in my life. See, the first church that God 
allow me to plant. They didn't start in a, you guys are fortunate, you got a whole thing here. That first church started in a McDonald's. I went there to grab a cup of coffee, and I asked the, the couple be, uh, in front of me if I could sit down with them and have the breakfast together. And I started sharing with them that I was a pastor from Cuba, was living here maybe a year, two years, a year and a half after, uh, after I came here. And I shared with them, I, want, I have the passion to open a church. And they look at each other and said, we were just praying about that. I say, about what? About finding the right person to start a new church. And I say, what? I invite them to my apartment. We start a congregation, my wife and I, and these two people, this, two, this couple. And one year after that, we were celebrating our first service with about 90 people in the congregation. God is good. God is good. God is good. But see, without the anointing, we are nothing. We cannot do it. It's simple like that. We cannot do it. But with the anointing, with the anointing, we can accomplish things, great things for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, in my experience, without the anointing, we just open social clubs, and that's okay. But with the anointing, we plant churches. And I think this church is being planted with the anointing <laughs> of Jesus Christ. Now, without the anointing, we sing songs. With the anointing, we worship God. This team, oh my gosh, they're on fire. They got the anointing. Hallelujah. Without the anointing, I have, you know, you can call me a father, but with the anointing, they will call me, my son I will say, he will call me that. Because the anointing have the capacity to make you personal. It will relate you with people. People will start finding you and will start finding hope in what you can share with them. Acts 1a says, but you will receive power. And you say with me, power. power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness, witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. So the anointing has a purpose in Jesus. Um, how, how, how am I doing with time? I'm about to finish anyway. See, Jesus understood that the anointing is with a purpose. Amen? Amen? That grace, and by the way, by anointing, I mean the supernatural power of God to do things that we cannot do on and on. Our own. And Jesus said, well, I have the anointing, the Holy Spirit is upon me, but it's for a reason. To bring good news to the poor. And we can see poverty in many, many levels. Amen? When I was in Cuba, I used to preach this message. And then people around says, Pastor, you're preaching socialism. I say, no. This is not socialism. <laughs> because socialism believes that everybody should be equal. You know? Poverty level. <laughs> while the government get rich and rich and rich, or richer and richer. No, I'm preaching the kingdom of God. Jesus is preaching to all kind of poverty, our soul, our mind, everything, to proclaim release to the captive. And you, you can see Jesus delivering, delivering many. Recovery of sight to the blind, you can see Jesus healing the blind. 
Let the oppressed go free. You can see Jesus delivering many people from demons and Satan. See, that's the problem we have in our society today, that people are oppressed and they don't know how to get free from oppression and they go and do many things to get free from oppression and they get more oppressed. But in Jesus, we have the freedom. And now it's time for the church to stop preaching happiness and start preaching freedom. Because God didn't send his son for us to be happy. He sent his son, his son to us, for us to be free. Amen? Amen. And to proclaim the year of the Lord. Now, we live in a different context. We all understand this. And especially the, the, the generation that I'm trying to, to reach, which is my own generation. And you know, God has placed an anointing to reach that generation. It's a special anointing to reach that generation. But we have to be open and let the Holy Spirit move through us. The, the context might be different, but God is still the same. Amen? See, I share with you that I become what they call a Cuban-American. I didn't know that existed before. Now I'm a Cuban-American. <laughs> I cannot even think that I'm 50-50. I'm a Cuban guy speaking a language that is not my own, <laughs> trying to. But you know, that naturalization process is still going and going. And it's the same with that church. Have we become anointed with the Holy Ghost? And we ask God to guide us, to relate to people, to talk to people, to be there with them. We, we will find a way. The Holy Spirit will show us the way. And you will see the fruit. Amen? Now, how far can I go? I don't know. I know that 12 years later, my favorite breakfast is biscuit and sauces. Uh, I mean, and so uh? And gravy. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I like it. I really do. Do you have the biscuit and the gravy? Woo! And two eggs. Um, I don't like American football. I'm sorry. I wish I, I, I could understand the game. I don't understand the game. I like soccer. But I like mac and cheese. <laughs> Ooh. See, God will provide a way for us to connect with people. What are the monster today? What are the contests today? What are people thinking about today? Let me give you this and I will end my sermon. Happiness today is found in having things, sadly. Security is found in money, power, status, good health. See, what society is preaching today is this. Above all things, above all things, seek comfort, pleasure, convenience. You will be okay. What they're preaching out there is you don't need God. In fact, you can choose what God you want and you will be okay. Because God is relevant to everyday life. You don't need God in your daily life. Christianity, that's what they're saying, is just one of many alternative spiritualities. Choose. And today, there's no more moral absolutes. What you believe is true, is true. Well, I got a news for you. This is not the word of God. And God still saying, I have anointed you to bring freedom. 
freedom, my message to these people. Hallelujah. And my question tonight is, what about them? Who is going to go? Who is going to share the love of God? Who is going to do the work? What about the brands of the world that are seeking an opportunity to connect with somebody that can teach, that can share the love of God? What about them? The Bible says, Romans 10, 14 says, But now are they to call on one in whom they have no belief. How are they going to do that? See, the church is, is, is quick to judge and say they don't want to know about God. But the Apostle Paul is saying, well, how are they going to believe? And how are they uh, to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone? Can you say with me, I am someone? Can you say with me, I am the someone? To proclaim him. Let's go out church. Empowered with the Holy Ghost. Empowered with the Holy Spirit. To share, to share the love of God. Now I have a surprise for you. And please don't tell my wife I did this. Uh, Fred can you help me please. I'm going to finish my sermon with that. Um, I brought you candy. You like candy? The reason I say don't tell my wife is because she is a dental a student <laughs> soon to be um, can you give one to each to everybody please don't eat it no don't eat it yet I think this is called life sa saver right yeah yeah I want you to hold Oh, there's a picture. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Yes? Pastor Maro, I'm done if you want to come. I want you to hold on this, Life Savior, and imagine that this is a friend of you, of yours, a family member, maybe a neighbor. And you're going to make a commitment today. You're going to say, God, I won't eat this. Don't eat it. <laughs> Don't eat it. Until I share your love with that person. I will start praying for him, for her. And until I share your message to that person, then I will eat it. Amen? Are you all with me? Let's go and do that. See, I'm a practical preacher. I want to see that person next, I mean, the next time. Hopefully, I got invited next time. <laughs> I want to see that person. And you can tell, tell me, Pastor, this is my life savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Franklin. At Grace Wesley, we serve an open table. That means that we believe that Jesus came and instituted the Holy Communion for everybody. Jesus didn't come and die on the cross for just a few or a particular denomination. He did it for everybody. And so we serve the Lord's Supper on Saturday nights and the table is open for all. It doesn't matter what your faith background is, what denomination you grew up in. Uh, the Holy Communion is for everybody. Frankly, would you come up and, and Annette, come up and help me serve, please. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had a meal in the upper room, a place we call the upper room, with his disciples. At the beginning of that meal, he took the bread. He raised it to heaven, gave thanks to God for it, then he blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. At the end of the meal, he took the cup of wine. He raised it to heaven. He gave thanks for it. Then he blessed it. And he passed it to his disciples and he said, this wine represents my blood shed for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's the blood of the new covenant. Each time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to make this bread and juice for us, the body and blood of Christ, so that as we partake of it, we become the body and blood of Christ to the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, friends, we serve communion by intention here. If you would like to come forward and partake of the Lord's Supper, then we invite you to come forth and take it. If you would rather take communion at your seat, Annette will bring around a tray that has a little cup that you can have the, a wafer and a cup and serve yourself there. We also have some gluten-free wafers if that is your preference. The table is open, friends. Come as you will. I begin our prayer time with praise and thanksgiving. I received a report from Chris Kelly reporting that her son-in-law, Brandon, which we had been praying for quite some time, received the results from a recent test that is showing 100% donor cell result resulting from the transplant. However, he's still not out of the woods yet. Rejection of the transplant is still possible. So we need to continue to pray for Brother Brian. Sally Subero asked us to pray for her and Laurie Scarborough's co-worker by the name of Kim, who is in a Miami hospital with serious heart issues. Gary and Kathy Porter ask us to pray for their granddaughter who just had an MRI on her brain this week. Now Kathy and um, Gary has not shared the results of that, but she just had the brain MRI uh, this week. Tammy Nielsen continues to ask us to pray for her friends. She's got a couple of friends, one of whom is suffering from Crohn's disease and uh, she also needs a prayer. Myron and Annette ask us to pray for Myron's mom. She was scheduled to come and visit, but then had a visit with her doctor, and a doctor discovered that she has some spots on her bladder. She will be going through a biopsy on Monday, and we just need to pray that those spots are not cancerous. They also got an issue with one of their dogs, you know, uh, who's not doing well. Dog name is Cricket. And uh, they anticipate that this dog could be nearing the last portion of his life. So we just ask for peace and comfort in that regards. Got a report today that we need to pray for Janice Milliken. That's uh, um, Doug's, Doug's wife, who's just not feeling well and has been sick for the last uh, several weeks. So we need to pray for her. And lastly, we need to continue to pray for our friends and our loved ones of this church who are in the process of recovering. We know who they are. They're in our thoughts and in our prayers, and so we need to continue to keep them there. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we just come before you and we give you thanks for holding Brandon tightly in your hands. We ask you to keep him there continue to pour your Holy Spirit of healing on him. He's making some strides in terms of improvement. But Father, we're going to pray to you, continue to pray to you, continue to pray to you that it will then lead to him getting better. We pray for friends who are having heart problems, who are in a hospital. 
We ask you to keep Kim close to you and give her peace and give her comfort and bring about healing for her. You know, there's a granddaughter who is going through difficult times, who's gonna have a MRI done on her brain. Quite sure, we're not quite sure what's going on there. But Father, we ask that you protect her, keep her safe. And Father, we also pray for Tammy friends, those that have disease like Crohn's and other kinds of ailment that they're going through. We ask you to keep them in your loving arms. And we also ask for prayer for Pastor Myron's mom. She may have these spots, but Father, we pray to you that those spots are not going to be cancerous. That she will come out of this MRI, no, no, this biopsy with a clean bill of health. We pray for Janice. We pray that she will find, you know, peace. And, and we ask, Father, to bring about, you know, healing for her. So, Father, we bring all these things to you. And in your will, we ask you, Father, to answer our prayers. And as we pray the prayer that you're son Jesus Christ has taught us we say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to feel. And the grace my feet relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone, my chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood, His mercy reigns Unending love, amazing grace The Lord has promised God to me his word, my hope secures. He will my sheep and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone. Come on, my chains are gone. I've been set free. Chains are gone. My chains are gone. 
for coming and sharing with us tonight. It was awesome. <laughs> Friends, uh, uh, a person that's, that's well known to many of you, uh, Barbara Sterry, passed recently. And there's going to be a service for her this coming Friday at Church by the Sea. I'll be sending out an email with details about that. It's going to be this coming Friday. Uh, so just look for that email. But friends, two days from now is Freddie's birthday. A couple of days ago was Ellie's birthday. Yeah. So there's going to be cake right after the service. You want the cake, right, Ellie? Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be cake right after the service. So if you want to stick around and have coffee and a piece of cake and fellowship, uh, we invite you to do that. But friends, like Franklin said, we've, Jesus wasn't the only one anointed. We've been anointed for this too. So take your little lifesaver, put it someplace where you're going to see it. Don't just drop it in the bottom of your purse. Put it on top of your dresser or put it someplace where you're going to see it over the next few days. There's somebody you know that you'd like to just have a conversation with about Jesus. And you've probably been praying about them or for them for a long time. Let that lifesaver be a reminder to keep praying for them. And when you have that chance to have that conversation with them, then you can eat the lifesaver. Right? Good. Okay. So friends, this week, go try to figure out exactly what that anointing God's given you is for in your context and see how you can live into that. And while you're trying to figure that out, remember, Emmanuel, God is with us. Go in peace, friends. Amen. Just that.
God, you are into the fullness of his love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Everyone put your hands together like this. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Just as you are, into the full. 